This is Ethan at Brandy Library once again. Uh, the last time we spoke, we had a little cocktail before dinner to get you ready to eat, but now dinner is over. And you need something to uh, help you digest and, more importantly, relax. Uh, I have personally found that cocktails after dinner can be a little tricky. They have a lot of sugar. A lot of things makes it harder for your body dige to uh, digest and doesn't always leave you feeling spectacular in the morning, which is why God invented whiskey. And because of that, we now can go to bed after a beautiful meal in peace. There are a number of different kinds of whiskey, and all whiskey is is an umbrella term that refers to anything uh, or any distilled spirit from a grain. Now, depending on what country it's from, how it's made, and what laws it abides by is going to determine what kind of whiskey it is. Tonight, we have two different single malts and one bourbon. On the single malt front, uh, these are scotches from Scotland. Uh, made in copper pot stills from 100% malted barley and matured for a minimum of uh, three years. First one we're going to start with is a classic Speyside malt called Glen Farkless. This is the last independent distillery in all of Speyside where most of Scotch whiskey is made. This is at 17 years old. Uh, at 17 years old, this is about the, the peak maturity for a lot of whiskeys. Yes, there are ones at 30 years old that are fantastic, but just as a broad rule of reference, the higher teens are an ideal way to, to locate the peak of a whiskey. When you taste a whiskey like this, it's not going to be smoky. You're not going to get any strange iodine flavors or anything else. What you are going to get is combinations of caramels and toffees and nuts and everything else. When you smell them, which is always the most important, try to keep your mouth open a little bit. That's going to reduce the uh, that. Uh, fabled alcohol burn that everybody chooses to complain about. I don't know why. That is how you end a meal. Right here. However, the whiskeys from Speyside, since they don't have any of those heavy smoky flavors, are usually paired well after dinner with meals of lighter, of a, uh, actually just lighter meals. Uh, you can go with them maybe something heavier than a fish chicken, porks, things like that. However, if you get into the winter months, heavier meals, char-grilled ribeyes, uh, laughable sizes, like 52 ounces, things need to be amped up. You need to, have to, need to uh, bring in the big guns, in which case we go to a small island in uh, Scotland called Isla, spelled I-S-L-A-Y. These whiskeys are notoriously smoky. They smell and taste like dying campfires. Yes, that is a desirable trait for some. The one we're drinking now is Ardbeg at 10 years old. You'll notice the color is phenomenally light. It's almost water, um, clear as water. These whiskeys, for those of us in the room, you can probably already smell from across. It smells like bacon, barbecue. Uh, in fact, there's a word we often use for these things called band aid -y. Uh, these flavors are so intense that whatever you had, you don't have to worry about what you've eaten. This whiskey is going to dominate and overpower everything. I typically don't find them suitable for summer months, but once you get addicted to the peat smoke, there's no turning back. You'll be drinking it all the time. Now we, uh, we took a quick little tour of Scotland with two very, very different type of whiskeys, but now it's time to come home uh, to the U.S. And U.S. is home to bourbon. Straight bourbon whiskey is uh, one of the most heavily regulated spirits in the world uh, by act of Congress in 1964. In 1964, Congress determined that bourbon whiskey had to be made in the United States of America. No, for all you trivia nuts out there, Bourbon does not have to be from Kentucky unless it is stated on the label. That will win you 100 bar bets. However, it does have to be made from 51% or more corn. It does have to be matured in a brand new American oak barrel. And to carry the term straight, it does have to stay in a brand new oak barrel for a minimum of two years. However, if it's less than four years old, that also has to be stated on the label. The one we're bringing out is an overaged bourbon called Elijah Craig at 18 years old. This means it's a single barrel. Single barrel whiskey has not been blended with any other barrels to, uh, to make a batch or anything else. It's one barrel, one bottle, straight to you. Bourbons are a lot more fun because they tend to have a little bit higher alcohol. 
and also for those of us who are a little bit more financially aware than others, tend to come in at a much better price point than some of the other spirits out there. So for this guy, better price, higher alcohol, that's a double whammy. On bourbons, the sweetness kicks up. The longer it stays in a barrel, the more influence it's going to have from the oak. So you do want to be careful going into your overage whiskeys, uh, especially your bourbons, because sometimes the caramel and the vanilla and the spicy notes can really outweigh the, the actual flavor and character of the, of the spirit itself. But then again, the other part, uh, fun part of bourbon is if you're down south and you're drinking these, you don't have to wait till after dinner to wash down your pulled pork sandwich with. Or for that matter, wait till after dinner. Or like the cocktail, you can have it before dinner or breakfast. Welcome to bourbon.